Dead Rising, Dead Island, Dying Light. I seem to have covered a fair few zombie games of late. In fact, the original intro line that I wrote to this video may have given you a sense of deja vu. I mean, listen to this. A comedy horror third person action hack and slash zombie game released on the PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2012. You'd be forgiven for thinking, oh no, Roy McCoy's had a breakdown. He's talking about Dead Rising again. But no, panic not. It was while making the What Happened to Dead Rising video that I suddenly found myself wondering as to the whereabouts of another protagonist who humorously redeparted the recently departed Juliet Starling. Hello everyone, I'm Roy McCoy, and in this video, that all-important question this time is what happened to Lollipop Chainsaw? A game that did well, became a reference point for a while for questions about objectivism and representation of women and men in video games, and then suddenly, after that, while maintaining a cult following, seemingly drifted off into a bit of obscurity, sadly ending up on many top 10 forgotten video games lists. Now, this video will go like this. First, I'll sum up what the game is, then talk about the development before moving on to its release, and finally that all-important question of could we ever see another one. Do please give this video a like as it helps out a lot. Before we crack on, I need to say that I will be looking at the history and future of Lollipop Chainsaw and all sources will be properly referenced in the description. However, this video is not a critique or analysis, so I won't be discussing the question of objectivism. But I will reference the sources that do, so you can check them out if you want to read more around the game. Now, without further ado, what is Lollipop Chainsaw? As I said in the intro, Lollipop Chainsaw is a comedy horror third person action hack and slash zombie game released on the PS3 and Xbox 360 on June the 12th, 2012 in North America, two days later in Japan, and bringing up the rear on June the 15th, 2012 in Europe. Seriously, why are we always last? The game was developed by Grasshopper Manufacture and was a collaboration between game designer Goichi Suda and filmmaker James Gunn, the bloke who made Guardians of the Galaxy. Suda51 is famous for having worked on games such as Killer is Dead, Let It Die and No More Heroes, and Suda has described his work as punk, and he used the word to signify how his and his company's games broke the mold of the traditional game. Lollipop Chainsaw was published by Kadokawa Games in Japan and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment in the rest of the world. So what do you do in the game? Well, you take control of Juliet Starling, voiced by Tara Strong. The character is a cheerleader zombie hunter who fights zombies using weapons including pom-poms and chainsaws. She can also be dressed in a variety of different outfits, including her cheerleader outfit and a giant bunny. Juliet comes from a family of zombie hunters, and you get to meet many of them during the game with some very witty exchanges. The game takes place in a fictional California high school on her 18th birthday. Sadly, your boyfriend Nick is bitten, and Juliet does the one thing she can to save him. She decapitates him, and ties his still-talking head to her belt where he stays for the entire game. And it is the witty dialogue between the two lovebirds where the majority of the humour comes from. It's also safe to say that the dialogue is rich with bad language and innuendos, even to the point where some of the talking zombies hurl brutal insults at Juliet, which some have said makes it all the more satisfying to dispatch them. The main antagonist in the game is a goth called Swan, who opens the portal between reality and the rotten world. Swan has summoned five intelligent zombies who act as boss fights and are called the Dark Purveyors, each of which are based on stereotypes of different types of music. Punk rock, Viking style heavy metal, psychedelic rock, funk, and old school rock and roll. And all of that leads to a classic boss fight. Jimmy Urin from the electro punk band Mindless Self Indulgence composed the music for the boss fights and also voiced the punk rock themed Dark Purveyor. And to be honest, it's probably the only game ever made in which you can slice and dice zombies while the soundtrack is playing Hey Mickey. If you've never played it before, Think about having that in your life for a second. Other features of the game include a medal system. Gold medals can be earned by slaughtering zombies, destroying stuff, and saving classmates. The last part of which led some to compare it to Dead Rising. These medals can be used to purchase new moves, combos, and stat increases. There are also platinum medals which are won by multi-killing three or more zombies and can be used to purchase new costumes, music and artwork. And on another note, this game also contains one of the most infamous trophies ever seen in a video game. 
The achievement's name is I Swear I Did It By Mistake and involves you trying to look up Juliet's skirt while she's telling you not to. More on that later. But that is Lollipop Chainsaw in a nutshell. Now let's hit on the development. The game was first hinted at as a stylish action game in October 2010 in an article on oneop.com. The game was officially announced in July 2011 and was said that Suda had been inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer. When Suda announced the game, he described it as featuring really extreme twists and being very funny. In other marketing, there were some trailers that were released to promote the game and had a grindhouse style of filmmaking, and they also starred famed cosplayer Jessica Nigri, who also promoted the game at E3 2012. Other people who worked on the game include James Gunn, and he helped develop the game's stories and characters. In terms of art, the characters and chainsaw used by the protagonist were designed by Neko Shogun, known for her previous work on games such as Guitar Freaks and Drum Mania. Other than that, on the development end, there was no reported development hell, and the game released in 2012. So, now let's talk about the release. The game actually performed better in Japan than in North America or Europe. In Japan, the game received generally positive reviews upon release. However, on Metacritic, the Xbox 360 version has a meta score of 70 and a user score of 7.0, while the PlayStation 3 version has a slightly lower meta score of 67 and a slightly higher user score of 7.2. From all the reviews I've read of the game, I have to say that IGN summed it up most beautifully in their intro. They said, If you asked 100 people what they loved most about Lollipop Chainsaw, you'd get 100 different answers, and exactly zero of them would have anything to do with the part where you play it. You'd hear about the grindhouse style, brilliant comedy, shocking vulgarity, totally rock and roll soundtrack, or clashing themes. Nobody's instinctive answer would be, oh yeah, the combat was a lot of fun. This is the struggle of Lollipop Chainsaw. It's a one-of-a-kind experience, a game as fearless as it is unforgettable, and it's as sterile as action games come. GameSpot also praised the game's jokes, gameplay excursions, and boss battles, but criticized its crudeness, control, and camera quirks and combat. In fact, most of the criticism was levied at gameplay in all of the reviews that I've read, including the fact you couldn't jump over cars in the car park and you had to run around them, which just seems really counterintuitive on a hack and slash action game. Lollipop Chainsaw also became Grasshopper Manufacturer's most successful title, selling more than 1 million units worldwide. Without going too deep into the subject as well, it was also talked about lots in reference to sexism in video games and certainly created conversations. Jim Sterling, in an article on Destructoid, had this to say about the game. I think I cracked an underlying theme that runs throughout the story. A subtle one, but one worth examining. Lollipop Chainsaw has something to say on the matter of objectification. And before you think I'm pointing out the obvious, I'm not talking about Juliet. As an 18-year-old cheerleader, Lollipop Chainsaw's Juliet Starling seems quite obviously built to fulfill the fantasies of a male audience, and I'm certainly not going to claim that that wasn't the intention. She bends over every few minutes to give us a glimpse of what's under her insanely short skirt, and she's not afraid to fight an undead horde wearing nothing but a bikini. I do not think anybody could deny that she, as a character, is objectified by the game. Whether you think it matters or not is up to you. Whether you think it's played for genuine sexual satisfaction or sheer comedy is also a fine debating point. It's not the kind of objectification I want to talk about, however. I am actually talking about a character who is literally objectified when he is bitten by a zombie and decapitated by Juliet in an attempt to save his life. The magically resurrected talking head that is the heroine's boyfriend, Nick. From the outset, Nick's plight in Lollipop Chainsaw fascinated me. He, he spends the majority of the game hanging from Juliet's backside with little more to do than comment on the current situation and helplessly scream in terror whenever his living transportation does something reckless. Nick, as one of a handful of male heroes in the game, is absolutely powerless, rendered unable to perform even the simplest tasks by himself and existing utterly at the mercy of his girlfriend. That article apparently also got the attention of James Gunn, and in another article, he spoke to Destructoid about sexiness and sexism. Alicia Bear 77 on their blog states this, That brings me on to the most interesting part of the game. Through role reversal, Lollipop Chainsaw exposes the common plight of many female characters in games. 
Nick, the boyfriend at the beginning of the game, gets bitten by a zombie. And in order to save him, Juliet decapitates him and uses a magic ritual to keep him alive just as a head. Through this, Nick throughout the game is treated and referred to as an it or thing, not a person. The sisters don't actually address him. They just talk about how cool it is that he's just ahead to Juliet while he objects to the coolness of the situation. And like I said before, if you do want to read more about this, all of these links are in the description and there are plenty more articles about Lollipop Chainsaw out there. So, what happened to it and why did we never get a sequel? Well, the game got okay to good reviews, but not great. Likewise, the sales were good, but nothing amazing. So it seems that a sequel just didn't seem viable at the time. And now, nine years on, we ask that question, could we ever see another one? In 2019, Suda51 said that he would like to make a sequel, and there is certainly enough of a fan base to warrant one. There's also enough scope for plot. Maybe now at work, or in a different location, a university, or have the boyfriend Nick training to be a zombie hunter, or trying to get his old body back. There are lots of opportunities. And even though some did compare it to Dead Rising, with the recent lack of Dead Rising titles, there is an opening in the market for a tongue-in-cheek and witty zombie game. But I would give the chances of us seeing another one a cautious maybe, admitting that it is possible, but I'm not confident. Yes, the director said he wanted to make a new one, and it sold relatively well and got okay scores, but sadly it didn't set the world on fire in terms of sales or reviews. Suda51 has also moved on to other projects, and many of the games he has made will probably find themselves on the What Happened To series. I also couldn't see James Gunn getting involved in a sequel, now being the huge and established Hollywood director with the Marvel franchise that he is. As for a remake or a remaster, well, due to the issues with gameplay, such as the lack of jumping over cars, I doubt we'd get a remaster, but a remake is possible. So, I'm going to say it's doubtful we'll see another one, but it's clearly possible. Let me know in the comments below if it's something you'd like to see, or if there's another game and or series you'd like me to cover. But from me today, it just leaves me to say thanks for watching, and this is Roy McCoy, out!